Hey guys, I know it's been a while since I've actually posted a video, but today I've got some great news for you. I'm going to be posting a full stack series on how to build out a recipe book. This recipe book app is basically going to be a CRUD app, but hear me out. It's going to include building a API server with ASP.NET Core. It's going to be building a full on UI with React, and I'm going to be showing you how to publish those things with GitHub Actions. Unfortunately, I won't be covering the basics of C Sharp, JavaScript, or TypeScript in this tutorial. So if you need to freshen up your knowledge on that, please do so ahead. Before I actually get into the demo, I just wanted to give a quick thanks to all the people who have subscribed. Since my last video, I've actually reached over a thousand. So thank you guys so much for your support. So let's jump into the demo. As you can see here, I have a app built in React. It is using Material Design, so it is nice, sleek, and Best thing is it's responsive without having to do too much work. So I have here is just a nice little landing page. It doesn't actually have a login area. What it'll do is if you just click this login, it'll actually just go to the same link that it does here. So you click this, it'll take you to your recipes area. What this area is, is it's going to list a series of recipes that you have added over here. And it's going to just have a nice little image, a description, title. From here, what you can do is you can either view your recipe or you can go edit the existing one. First, let's go view and see how it looks like. So you see a nice little image up here, title, description, and you can see a list of ingredients that you need and a series of instructions that you'll be given. So let's go edit. And here you can see kind of how you edit it. Adjust title here if you want. You can add a better description, add more ingredients, and remove ingredients if you want, add more instructions. You can delete the recipe if you want, go back to view, save changes, you know, typical CRUD related. And also if you go to recipes here and create a new recipe. So let's just kind of fill this in real quick. Pizza, make pizza. Like let's go one cup of flour. And let's go here. And I'm just gonna leave this blank and upload an image if you want. I have some images here. So let's upload a pizza. Okay, so once you have that, you click Save, and you'll notice that it's a server side error. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to do full server side. I actually don't even have any client side error just because I wanted to demonstrate some server side error for you guys. So let's go back and just give this some instructions. So cook pizza. All right, so let's click Save, and bam, you'll be taken back to this. I'm just going to close the developer tool. And you can see that your pizza is now added here. And you'll notice how fast that was. It was actually cached in a memory cache, the built-in one to ASP.NET Core. And obviously you can switch it with Redis or anything else. But you'll kind of learn all that as I go along building out the API. And I'll actually give you guys a breakdown of what potentially might be coming up. So let's go back to the slide. So the goal will be to break each one of these points down into a self-contained video if possible. Maybe I'll have to do two, depending on how complicated and how in-depth I have to go. You'll see the first one I'm going to be doing is how did you set up a ASP.NET project? So the basics, probably cover a little bit of routing, project setup, what is the thing that actually runs the application, maybe some Visual Studio setup as well. Um, the next one I'm going to be showing you guys is actually how to set up Docker. So if you guys haven't used Docker yet, this will be a quick little introductory tutorial. If you have, you can probably skip this and go ahead to the next one, which will be built out your controllers. We're going to be setting up Swagger just so you can kind of go through the process of documenting your API so that if you are not the full stack developer doing both the front end and back end, your API documentations can both be a way to generate a client side SDK for your UI developers, or it's just a good way to kind of keep track. Next, we'll be talking about data. So I'm going to be modeling out basically what you guys saw, kind of go through the mindset of modeling it out. And then I'm going to be showing you how to use Dapper, which is a micro OR to do your data access. Obviously, we're going to go back a little bit and actually use Docker to set up a SQL instance for development purposes. Then I will refactor kind of all the things that we kind of built, use Mediator, use a CQRS pattern to kind of separate out how we can kind of do our commands and queries, have our read models from our write models, and actually introduce caching easier. And then we'll do the little bit of the good stuff, so adding a little server-side error, how you are going to do your error handling strategy. So if an exception gets thrown in your system, what do you want? 
want to do, what kind of best practices you can do to get started with kind of handling it throughout your system. Afterwards, I would kind of just do a little bit of unit testing, integration testing. I feel like that needs to be covered. And a lot of the times it's not really covered. I'll show you some tools that you guys can use to kind of make your life a little bit easier with that too. And a little bonus at the end, I'm going to be doing some logging and using an elk stack. Next, we will talk about what I'm going to be doing with the UI. I'm going to be showing you some setup and basics of React, just kind of get you guys a little bit more comfortable with it. And then we'll kind of dive straight into setting up the project, setting up some of the routes, just to kind of have the basic skeleton of the project set up so you can kind of envision where it's going to be at the end of it. And then we're going to use a material UI, utilize what is already pre-built. So you don't have to do a whole new implementation of material or bootstrap. I'm going to actually be building out the pages submitting some of the forms. So the list page, view page, edit page, adding of the new recipe page. These might be broken down into different uh, videos. I haven't recorded them yet, so we'll see how long they get and I'll kind of try to break it down so it's easier to ingest them. And I will show you guys how to actually refactor all the forms that we have built so far with Formic. So up until that point, I kind of wanted to go through a more standardized way of a story that could happen that you would build something in React and then all of a sudden you kind of hear about this cool little tool that you want to try out and your strategies to refactor why would you want to refactor and finally we're going to be just talking about the error handling strategy on the ui as well server-side error server-side validations just what happens if your javascript kind of just blows up because you forgot to check if something is undefined and one of the things i actually forgot to put on this slide was we're going to be using the swagger documentation we actually built on the api to generate the ui and i will also kind of show you how to implement one just so you have experience in how to actually do that by yourself and next, we'll just be talking about GitHub. I'll cover the basics, go over setting up a CI system, and then we'll go over deploying to Azure. I will probably do future videos on GitHub Actions and more, probably more on Azure DevOps to cover like packaging and how to do integrated testing and all those kind of things. But for now, this is going to be covering just the basics of GitHub Actions. Hopefully you guys are excited about what's going to be coming up with this tutorial series. It's going to be a lot of work recording and editing. So I'm going to be trying my best to make a video at least once a week. Once again, if you are part of the 1000 who have subscribed, thank you so much for your support. And hopefully I can try to grow this channel some more so I can spend more time making tutorials. So as always, subscribe to our channel, like the video, and put in the comments below any future videos you want to see. And I'll see you guys next time.